This right here caused a war in my comment section over on TikTok and YouTube Shorts. If you don't know what this is, these are lens hoods. And if you've ever seen them because they just came with the lens that you bought, or, or maybe you've never seen them before, you might be wondering just exactly what they're used for. So in this video, we're gonna answer that question. I actually have a test scene that we're gonna use over here to demo exactly what a lens hood does. Now, I actually asked whether or not you use lens hoods, and to my surprise, the answer was split pretty much 50-50. Now, at various points in my photography career, I've gone full lens hood, always using a lens hood, always using it with a UV protection filter, but now I tend to not use them. But before we get into why that is, I'm gonna jump over here and I'm gonna show you exactly what a lens hood does. Okay, here is what we're gonna do. The idea is that I have a light set off to one side to represent like the sun or a light source that's causing a lens flare inside of your photo. Right now, there is no lens hood on. I'm gonna go ahead, shoot the photo, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the lens hood for the 50 millimeter, clicked it into place. We're gonna take that exact same photo. Now looking at the two back and forth, you can notice on the right hand side of the image, we no longer have that washout. Now this is particularly noticeable in scenes where there's high contrast. That means you have blacks that are being washed out by a really bright light source. So I specifically chose this scene because I have all those cases back there that are black. As soon as you put that lens hood on, you can see immediately that washout gets removed and you have more contrast in your images. I'm gonna take that lens hood off and we're gonna try reframing this directly into the light source. So now the light source is visible inside our photo. I'm gonna take the photo again. Now without the lens hood and the light source, obviously we're still getting that washout. But if I put the lens hood back on and I take the photo again, you can see we're still getting that washout. So if you're trying to shoot a photo of the sun, for example, like a sunset, and you're getting those artifacts, those lens flares, that washout, it's not gonna be able to solve the problem. A lens hood won't work in that case. Now, if your camera lens didn't come with a lens hood, you can buy them separate. This lens, which I bought years ago, which is a 17 to 55, didn't come with a lens hood. All you have to do, you can go online, search the specific focal length that your camera lens is and the thread size. So in this case, this is a 77 millimeter thread, and you should be able to find one for your specific camera. One thing you can do if you're in a pinch and you don't have a lens hood for your lens, you can actually grab your hat or grab your hand and simply just flag off the light so it doesn't hit your lens and cause either a flare or that washout that we saw in the example photo. Unfortunately, in some cases, like in this photo where I was shooting headlights of a car, there's really not any way to avoid that washout that you get. Or in this case specifically, what it was that I was getting was a back reflection. So the light was going directly into the lens, hitting the sensor and then kind of internally reflecting. So you get that really weird distorted reflection of the highlight of that car headlight. Without a lens hood, the front glass is kind of just exposed. But if I take this guy, and I put it on, now it's a little bit harder to bump or dent the front of your lens. Now that's not a foolproof plan because let's say you're shooting in, in a desert or somewhere where there's lots of debris and lots of wind, like in this case of shooting helicopters, you can still get wind driven debris that will hit the front of your lens. In those cases, you're gonna be better off using a UV protection filter or something else that will actually fully protect the front Front of your lens. Over the years, my main go-to for UV protection filters have been these Tefin UV protection filters. And that's because they're relatively affordable. You know what? I don't even need a knife to open this. <laughs> I think I just wanted to pull out my knife. But these Tefin ones, you can get them for under $20. And if I show you before without the UV protection filter and with the UV protection filter, you'd be really hard pressed to notice a difference. Even Polar Pro, for example, makes a UV protection filter. Theirs is a little bit more expensive. And I've been tempted to try it just to see if there is a noticeable difference between the Tefin and the like $100 Polar Pro UV protection filter. So I'll throw up some image comparisons now just using a test chart to see if you can actually spot the difference between with the UV protection filter and without. 
the UV protection filter. Now I know people will freak out and say, why would you put a $20 piece of glass or, or even a $100 piece of glass in front of your $3,000 piece of camera glass camera lens. And the answer that I will always go to is, is you never know when something is gonna hit the front of your camera lens. So always use protection. The tricky part about lens hoods and lens filters is that they aren't always compatible. Like this right here is a Polar Pro variable ND filter. Now it's an 82 millimeter Polar Pro ND filter. Like most of the lens filters I buy, I buy them in an 82 millimeter thread size. The reason for that is most of my other lenses like this 24 to 70 or the 15 to 35 are also an 82 millimeter thread. Like right now I've got the clear UV protection filter on the front of this guy. So any filter I buy needs to be the 82 millimeter size. But this lens and the 50 millimeter lens are 77 millimeter. So what I actually do for every lens I buy, I buy one of these step up rings. There's no glass, there's nothing in here. It's just a piece of aluminum. You take it, you screw it on the front, and I can take that 82 millimeter thread and easily attach it to the front of my lens. But the problem is now I can't take this lens hood because the lens filter is blocking me from doing that. So in order to fit it, I actually have to take this lens filter back off, attach the lens hood, and then screw it in. Now the nice thing with these telephoto lenses from Canon is that they have a little like side window. So I, I could go in and either screw it on or like adjust the stops of the variable ND filter. But most of the time when I'm in a run and gun setup, I'm not even gonna bother with that. Like I'm just leaving the lens hood at home. Okay, oh no, we just got the filter and not the adapter. <laughs> This is what I mean. It's really difficult in a run and gun scenario to be swapping lens hoods and filters and all, and all of that at the same time. Not to mention that these are really large and difficult to store in your camera bag. One of the strategies I used to use is that I would take this, I'd put it on backwards and then it, it's kind of a way to store it. Or if you have multiple sizes, you can kind of just like nest them one inside of each other. Like typically this just lives like this in my shelf and I never use them. So then what do you do if you take these filter threads and you attach, oh gosh. So what about lens caps? Let's say you put an adapter ring on the front of your lens and you go to take this 77 millimeter lens cap and you go to put it on and you, and you find that it just doesn't stick the same way it would when you didn't have that thread adapter. Well, you can actually step up. So here is a 77 millimeter lens cap here is an 82 millimeter lens cap. And because we now have those larger threads, now I can use that larger lens cap. But what about if I also have a lens filter like this ND filter on the front of my lens? The lens cap no longer works. There's just nowhere for it to grab. This is a universal lens cap. In the same way that the Peter McKinnon ND filter comes with a little rubber cover, this is essentially a little rubber cover that just stretches and fits over pretty much any size lens filter. If the threads on the front of your camera are 82, it fits. If the threads on the front of your camera are 77, it fits. Here's a 35 millimeter with a 52 to 82 millimeter step up ring. Looks a little bit funny, but it fits. So if you're planning on using step up rings and thread adapters to the point where you can't use the standard lens cap that came with your camera lens, then you can just pick up one of these little rubber caps and problem solved. If you enjoy this video, you'll probably also enjoy this video right here. Or if you're not already and you wanna see more photo adventures and more photo tips like this, make sure you hit that subscribe up here, down there, wherever it is. <laughs> Until the next one, Go shoot photos.